Hey guys, Kevin Cage back with another cryptocurrency update. Be sure to like, sub, and let's get into the information again. One take and uncut as always. So we are on the World Economic Forum's website. And again, we do find it pretty timely that they call this year the Great Reset. Now, this does not just have to do with technology and finance like we care about. This has to do with a global movement. Keep in mind, as you keep up to date with all of the news and trending, we understand that this whole pandemic has kind of served as a narrative. And yes, I understand it is a real thing. And I do respect that. And I know that lives have been lost and my heart goes out to them. But I do believe that there are things behind the scenes to some degree and, you know, puppets involved. So again, I'm not trying to offend anybody, simply sharing my thoughts that I think, you know, it's pretty timely how there's, you know, metals reaching all time high, push for going cashless, every single fintech, every single you know, federal payment system around the globe is updating and revamping their system behind the scenes. We have one of the biggest, largest stock crashes in history, yet the wealthiest people in the world sold at all time high right before that happened. Um, people just don't read between the lines. And I think King Solomon just says it best when he says people don't care. Most people don't even care about these opportunities right now. So the fact that you're here even watching this video looking to improve your life shows a lot of things and tells a lot of things about you. And again, it's super cliche to say, you know, this Tony Robbins type of quote. But if you want to change your life, you have to change your life. It's up to you. Nobody's going to save you, period. So notice COVID-19, guys, has accelerated India's digital reset. This vernacular, remember, in 2018, Ripple said that we have roughly 50% of the entire country of India in the pipeline, one of the BRICS nations. Pay attention to that. Words mean things, all right? The legislation of India, you realize how it was really all smoke and mirrors and nothing more than FUD. We have people coming out admitting that they are getting paid writing articles that are just completely based off of fear, uncertainty, and doubt. I think, you know, there's something much more to all of this. This doesn't just have to do with finance. Of course, it's going to be focused on climate change, you know, biomedical technology, working together, financial inclusion, which hopefully, you know, distributed ledger technology pushes towards. We're going to be in control of our funds in the years to come, guys. This is a true revolution. This is going to be flipping the model of investing on its head entirely. Exactly just what information did, or the internet did for information, this is what's happening for value. Typically, every, let's say, 90 to 100 years, there are black swan events in the marketplaces, and the typical world reserve currency does get shifted or adjusted. Could we see some type of new basket of currencies or SDR, or, you know, something come up and kind of help digitize the system per se with, you know, maybe much more than just oil. Maybe it will be fractionally back to some degree by a basket of tokenized metals. Maybe it will, you know, need liquidity with certain assets that are digital assets. We have central banks experimenting on this technology. Some of the biggest banks in the world have already trialed XRP and whatever you believe, I can assure you that they're not doing that for fun. All right. So <clears throat> remember, it is kind of fun to think that how, you know, all people are talking about, you know, entering the age of Aquarius, the water bear. And we have this company called Ripple, which obviously sounds very liquid centric. I mean, for example, their main digital asset XRP is on demand liquidity. Formerly, the ODL was called X Rapid. They have their other messaging service, which is X Current. Um, again, guys, I, I do think it's pretty comical. You know, the smallest fraction of an XRP is a drop. Um, just all right in front of you. All right. You know, even X pool, et cetera. So before I get too off of focus here, I just wanted to kind of push this out. Remember ripple, one of the very few companies that actually attended where the 1% of the 1% attend at the world economic forum. We've heard the people discuss this. We've even heard what was his name? Was it Jay Bianco Mano probably butchered his name, but of state street, they custody 30% of the world's electronic wealth, roughly what $30 trillion. And what did he say for digital assets and crypto assets when everything will be tokenized and all of, you know, the traditional market needs to be bridged to become more modern and updated. He said verbatim, trickle 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 flood again all water-based this will be happening quickly all right we've heard that vernacular everywhere so it's really interesting so again what i'm thinking is ripple trickle flood period okay christine lagarde again formerly of the international monetary fund as the director she is now the president of the european central bank obviously her mark carney we can go on and on I have deep ties with the company ripple all right so Let's get into the information. So in terms of, you know, the Great Reset, which companies are working on following not only, you know, regulation and working with banks and customers and helping tra with transparency and actually solving real problems for real customers, but which groups are focusing on the energy side as well? Ripple, guys, with XRP, the XRP ledger, period. 
So right here, for example, this is something made by, again, Status, S-T-E-D-A-S on Twitter, definite follow on his website, just showing you guys XRP environmental uh, sustainability versus Bitcoin. So again, quote from David Schwartz, if you guys want to screenshot this, you know, pause the video, go ahead and take this, just comparing, you know, terawatt hours to Bitcoin, again, power in countries, and yes, proof of work with its consensus mechanism is highly inefficient. People can say it's secure, not necessarily when all the mining pools are centered in China. And guess what? Even if more and more migrate to Texas now, there's still going to be the same type of issue. All right. Again, XRP, it has its focus is on consensus. They call it, you know, proof of consensus, proof of correctness. It is very, very different for a model. So again, Ripple showing this XRP is 57,000 percent times or 57,000 times more efficient guys for every 1 million transactions xrp xrp could power 79,000 light bulb hours whereas bitcoin could power 4.5 4 billion light bulb hours now just so you guys can understand how much bigger that is 57,000 times let's just kind of do this little exercise so in terms of the show numbers so if you were to count via you know seconds so if you counted to 1 million starting from zero, it would take, you know, 11 days, give or take. Now, if you go to 1 billion, that would take roughly 31 years. And if you try to count to 1 trillion, multiply that 31 years, give or take, by another thousand. So it takes roughly 31,000 years to count to 1 trillion. Now, just understand XRP, the digital asset that is literally primed and built for on demand liquidity with the existing payments ecosystem and the issues that we have today because there's high friction, not transparency, speed, etc., is designed to solve a multi trillion dollar problem, whether it's five trillion or twenty seven trillion dollars that is tied up. And then we have their partners, for example, Volante, several trillion dollars per day without, you know, batting an eye. ACI worldwide, well over a hundred million transactions or hundred million dollar transaction valuation per second. Yeah, exactly. So I don't care if you guys believe it's you know all or nothing. If XRP can get a slice of this pie, it's game over. And yes, that has to be an open source protocol. It's based off of trust. You're not going to have every single government in the world agree to use a single asset because they all do not want to use the U.S. dollar. There's going to be one party that has the control. They need to level the playing field. The vernacular is the same, just like in the dot com bubble, except this is significantly more bit. You know, this is significantly more important. The geopolitical tensions are at an all time high. So again, this article just came out. If you guys want to read this, this is on Ripple's website, uh, Recent Insights on July 8th. And again, David Schwartz and just kind of going over again, in effect, the consensus that governs transactions of the digital asset XRP solves for the double spend problem without the need for energy intensive proof of work mining. Guys, I highly recommend just reading this article. Super brief, you know, super brief. And, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, they can try to migrate to proof of stake. And yes, there's going to be many, many successful proof of stake, you know, types of blockchains and DLT networks. I just think that XRP is unique for a reason. And they've successfully closed 55 million plus ledgers without a single error. There's no double spending issue. There's nothing like that. Banks have been testing this for quite some time. And again, as I say in every single video, banks are not just going to all create, you know, an XRP 2.0 and agree to use it out of nowhere. That would defeat the purpose of building years of infrastructure on ramps and liquidity within this ecosystem, period. OK, understand that's way beyond XRP. There's benefits for the XRP L and also is built in mind with IOP. We have the founders. They created IOP and they said that, yes, the secret sauce is interledger protocol with XRP. And we already heard in the previous video again. Dilip Rao explain why and how the banks kind of are going to utilize ILP, RippleNet first, and then boom, switch. Okay. So whether it's Corda, whether it's RippleNet, I am just betting big that we are going to see growth in this ecosystem for XRP specifically. All right, Matthew LINY just sharing this, guys. So I think this was actually um, around for maybe a year or so, but I wasn't aware of it. So buying gold or silver. So they actually accept XRP as an option. So they do call XRP uh, Ripple in this case. And again, this is on the website. So I'm just going to say, um, you know, SwissGold.ch. And as you can see right here, select Ripple XRP as your currency on the website. You can place your order online. You can pay with altcoins, etc. Just a fun little use case if you guys care. All right, website's right here. Now, what I want to talk about, the good stuff regarding, again, CBUAE, that is the central bank, the United, um, United 
Arab Emirates, excuse me. And then AMF is the Arab Monetary Fund. So we know Arab Monetary Fund is a Ripple Net partner. We know which country was it or which region. I believe Brad Garlinghouse was actually on. It was in 2020. It was named like the top 50 or top 500 most influential people, which I thought was really funny. Um, and obviously, you know, I'm sure he's deserving of it. We'll talk about how high of the rates that these people are paying for remittance payments. It can be as high as like 13%. I have heard uh, videos of even Navin Gupta, Naveen Gupta of Ripple explaining this, and it's just absolutely unbelievable. So right here, guys, the central bank in the UAE and AMF announced signing of an agreement to offer clearing. Okay, so we don't really care about that, but we care about settlement services. Now, we know Ripple, RippleNet as a whole can absolutely help with all of this and the communication aspect of it. So yes, potentially. Okay. And we do know that a huge portion of the globe, though, is already utilizing Swift GPI, which is essentially just a ripoff of X current. I don't care if they're using GPI. That is not a threat to XRP. I only care about settlement. All right. Next up, <clears throat> so right here, just on, so we're on MinaFN.com, so again, Middle East, Northern Africa, N.com, or uh, FN.com, so again, talking about this partnership with uh, settlement services, and as you can see and read a little bit more, through the Buna platform for Arab payments after the completion of technical link operations, so Buna, something to pay attention to, and then as you can see right here, guys, the AED accounts for a large percentage of Arab payments with transactions accounting for over 13% of Arab financial transactions, barring individual transfers via foreign currency exchange companies. All right, barring individual transfers does not sound very inclusive, does it? All right, maybe DLT will potentially be able to help reduce that friction. So right here, Matthew Alanwai, awesome thread below. So again, thank you for sending this my way. So Arab Monetary Fund using RippleNet for financial inclusion. No surprise, they have a direct mention with XRP here as well, talking about Buna to support Arab banking using blockchain. So we're going to kind of speed through this, just pay close attention here, okay? So financial inclusion, we just said inclusion, interesting. Again, this is April 2020, the Arab Monetary Fund, technology-led globalization age, leveling the playing field. All right, talking about Buna, again, real time, low risk, affordable, secure, compliance. Okay, and no notice this key objectives of Buna sounds very, very similar increase efficiency of cross border payments, mm -hmm. reduce transaction duration, yep, decrease liquidity cr requirements, such as obviously no stroke consolidation, yep, reduce banks' costs associated with existing channels, enhance and standardize the level of compliance. Got standardization sounds really silly, but just doing that across the board with the existing clunky correspondent banking network today would probably increase efficiency tenfold in certain corridors. I think you guys have heard the, you know, the analogies of logistics with those giant freight containers when they actually went globally for globalization and just all agreed to kind of use the same type of standards. I forgot how high it, I mean, it probably increased production or something by, you know, dozens or hundreds of percent. I forgot the exact statistic, but I'm sure many of you already know it, probably have it from memory better than me. All right. So again, enhancing standardization, enhancing the level of central bank oversight. Okay. Well, DLT, everybody has an immutable shared copy. So I don't think anything can do it better than DLT, resiliency, nodes, etc. You guys can find who you trust, just like, you know, Ripple with a unique node list. That's what comes to mind. Ensuring minimal disruption of market participants to promote and facilitate market uptake. All right. So we'll keep going. So Buna is something to keep an eye on. As you can see, guys, again, blockchain estimated to further bring down global banks operational costs by 30 to 70% by 2025. We understand we've heard, you know, X rapid now on demand liquidity utilizing XRP can bring down costs potentially 70%. Talking about 2025, another key year that we see across the board. Okay, traditional channels, blah, 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 blah. Next, as we can see here, guys, these RSPs, remittance service providers, as you can see right here. In fact, remittance service providers may use crypto assets in the business to business cross currency leg. Now, this is what's important. Neither the sender nor the recipient of funds hold crypto assets. Again, sounds just like that video, my previous video, Chris Larson talking about Visa, Earthport and Swift in particular, no strict consolidation, allowing none of them to have to hold the funds. Again, it is exclusively by the remittance service provider. It does sound vaguely like on-demand liquidity. You guys let me know your thoughts. So as for the second model, Ripple's DLT base solution X Rapid. Now today is it is called ODL on-demand liquidity. I think the name is the name is absolutely perfect and fitting. That uses the crypto asset XRP to enable remittance service providers to lower foreign exchange costs and ensure faster settlement. 
Now, what is interesting as well is talking about, you know, these exchange rates, correct? Well, remember, what was it, 2004 or maybe, you know, 1990s, they have the International Monetary Fund showing, you know, prices and constant exchange rates, you know, fluctuating between all currencies, right? And that is constantly going. So the thought is that a highly liquid bridge asset that has developed liquidity, because you cannot fake liquidity, guys. XRP has been being developed for quite some time. I know many of you are probably sick of it, but if you bought, say, early 2017, you could have gotten it for half a penny. So just understand, good things take time, all right? What goes up must come down, and I'd rather have it go slow and steady than, you know, not at all. So what's in interesting, remember, XRP also to the IMF stood for, on that document at least, exchange rate peg. Thought that was pretty interesting, all right? Could be a complete coincidence, but again, when you're talking about people like Chris Larson, I mean, these people are selling businesses for, you know, 100 to 300 million dollars like no big deal some of the original you know people in paypal we have peter Thiel as one of the investors in OpenCoin back in the day um, i think you guys can start to read between the lines and recognize a good company in particular a ripple from the get-go meeting with the federal reserve within a month or three months of its inception okay so don't take it from me do your own research decide for yourselves but obviously I'm quite confident in this ecosystem in particular with what Ripple has been doing thus far because, yes, they are saving their clients tons of money. And, yes, I don't know their actual fee or the charges that they're actually making their profit by, you know, for utilizing their software for all these financial institutions. I don't know that behind the scenes, but based off of their current valuation, which is not just derived based off of XRP, I am quite confident. All right. Again, just old Ripple news that I was just reading with the Middle Eastern Bank. Um, right here, so the Financial Stability Board, just an old document, the FSB, even talking right here with remittance service providers and look at the same type of narrative, talking about interoperability between payment services and platforms, okay? All right in front of us. Again, this is May 2019. This vernacular is going to continue on. It's going to be so fun when basically, you know, Moon Day hits or we're finally surpassing all-time high and really get moving. And we're going to look back day in day out and see where we were right and where we are you know way off because this is going to just keep happening <clears throat> i remember you know 2017 you couldn't even say bank of america was a ripple net partner even though we had many many groups specifically say like not just guys off youtube like legitimate people in the industry say yes bank of america is a part of ripple net i saw king solomon just show another document that he showed you know years ago or maybe last year of you know the swift and uh uh, maybe it was a Bank of America document showing R3 and Ripple. Guys, these are some of the biggest players in the game. Look at the original investors behind them. It's not far-fetched or hopium to just name facts and say they're partners. All right, It's hopium to say that XRP is going to moon overnight and be this price. Yes, but again, the potential is there for a lot of these assets. I don't think people comprehend how thin the order books are today and what basic math does. Again, just a little volume that's consistent and increasing value will eat up the order books period okay banks need to send i don't think they understand how expensive it is in some of these illiquid corridors and eventually these tier one banks are going to be forced to finally step down whether it's quickly or you know slowly it's happening now we are living through history okay so again this is still part of the thread that matthew all i and shared i just want to finish up with this okay um, let me see, make sure I'm not missing anything. So again, direct mention of Ripple and IBM as well. So new business models evolving new opportunities. So cross-border payments that focus. If XRP is a domestic use case in the future, awesome. All right. But again, I'm focused on this. So correspondent banking hubs like Earthport, Ripple Net enabled, bought out by Visa, allows payment service providers, PSPs, to centralize their international payments, hence avoiding the need to establish many bilateral correspondent banking relationships. Boom. Okay. All about, you know, disintermediation, clarity, Earthport is just going to be a hub. I, I think it's kind of like relatively low value payments, but a behemoth, okay? G7 working group stable coins. I mean, gosh, I could talk about stable coins forever too. It's all right in front of you. All right now, right here, thus presenting an option that might be an attractive, especially for smaller payment service providers or for less common corridors. So we have RippleNet, we have JP Morgan with their interbank inter information network. We have IBM and WorldWire. Again, you could talk about, you know, XLM with them as well. 
Um, it's all right in front of you. RippleNet combines APIs and encryption with distributed ledger tech, whereas the IN, INN, and BWW network are based on DLT. Similar to the Swift Global Payment Initiative, GPI, again, just a ripoff of Ripple's creation, XCurrent, those alternative messaging solutions include enhanced functionalities like end-to-end -end tracking. I mean, big deal, guys. That's just improving messaging. We're focused on settlements where XRP comes into play, which is actually settling with finality, immutability, on the core ledgers of the central bank. That is where all this value comes because then you're freeing that dormant money that is locked up globally. I don't think people comprehend the trillions of dollars that is sitting there doing nothing, facing capital costs, inflation, you know, spreads on both sides. It, to me, it's just clear as can be, but it might take more time, right? So in addition to the services, IBM and Ripple include a settlement functionality. That's all I care about. So guys, let me know your thoughts down below. I am just beyond excited for the future, uh, and time will simply tell. I don't think it's just going to be a straight line up. It's going to be typically, you know, up, consolidate, maybe go dip again, up, consolidate. I do have huge expectations for end of year. That is, like, even if I didn't have a YouTube channel, that would still be my honest opinion. I think you guys understand where the space is going. I mean, for God's sake, national banks in the United States can custody digital assets. It doesn't mean they're going to be holding them and selling them to us tomorrow. What I'm showing you is that hedge funds and banks will be able to start getting their feet wet. And I want them to just jump into the deep end. All right. With that, guys, I appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video.